Six months ago, I was unconvinced that the Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra could top the already amazing Tab S8 Ultra. Boy, was I wrong. Let's dive into the upgrades that won me over, some that didn't really, along with your burning questions as well. And a huge thanks to all of you in the community for sending me your questions. I love when you get involved. It does help me make this content more useful for you. Cheers. And that's what this channel is about, really. For example, Grizz Liber. Yeah, it does. Seriously though, let's talk about the obvious, which is the size of this tablet. Even though I've been using the Tab S8 Ultra since launch, I should really be used to the design by now, but every time I pick up the S9 Ultra, I still think, whoa, that is a big tablet. You do become a little bit more self-conscious of the size when you are in public, of course, because it does turn some heads because of its sheer size. In my experience, when you get this out of a bag in a meeting, for example, you know, people do ask questions, you know, what is this thing? You know, it's amazing because it is an impressive piece of tech and so thin, so light. The word that comes to mind every time I use it is elegance. Sure, it's still massive, there's no kind of going away from it, but it's such a pretty device. I decided to try the base this time and I'm super happy with it. The display is one of the main features really. This aspect ratio here is awesome for entertainment, but in my opinion, it's even better for getting work done. The colors are incredible and the contrast ratio on this display makes watching content on it almost like having your own personal cinema screen. Too much? It's true though. We'll talk about how I use this for work in a moment, but as you can see here, this new display is fantastic. Even when using in bright space like this, can't really tell you right now because it's, it's dark, it's after work, but I do have lots of windows here and you know lots of reflections and direct sunlight sometimes. And when it comes to the specs, it is still the same size and resolution as the Tab S8 Ultra, but the tech here is different. This is dynamic AMOLED, whereas the Tab S8 Ultra was super AMOLED. To put it simply, in plain English, what that means is that we're now getting ridiculous contrast ratio on this, 2 million to 1 in terms of contrast ratio against 100,000 to 1 on Super AMOLED, which was already pretty good. Absolutely gorgeous, right? When it comes to the weight, it's incredible how even with the keyboard cover, it only weighs about 1.4 kilos. Without the keyboard, it only weighs about 730 grams, which is insane given how big this thing is. Talking about that keyboard, by the way, Victor Oak Tree is asking here what the typing experience is like. To be honest with you, I returned this keyboard for my Tab S8 Ultra, I didn't get on with it and I still don't really like it. And recently, I decided to give it another go. As soon as you plug it in, I, I've got Dex going on here, we'll talk about Dex in a minute, but I'm still not a big fan of it, but I do think that that's because of, you know, I've used the Magic Keyboard for such a long time and it, it really is, when it comes to tablet keyboards, it's very hard to beat. If you are coming from an iPad and you have used the Magic Keyboard, you're gonna be disappointed if you expect anything close to that because it's just not as good as that. And that's because to use this, you have to really be on a flat surface. It's usable on, on the lap, but it's not that comfortable. This is still extremely nice to use. It feels and it sounds very pleasing as well. And to be fair, it has more functionality than the Magic Keyboard. It's just a larger keyboard. It has an entire row of function keys, it lights up as well. And the trackpad is a very decent size as well. I hope that answers your question. More about the accessories and different ways in which I use the Tab S9 Ultra in a bit when we talk about Samsung Dex. Now, I have a bit of a gripe about accessories in general, but I thought it was important to bring up the weight aspect here because this does make the Tab S9 Ultra a very powerful tablet for commuters out there and in many situations can indeed even replace a laptop. I'm not saying you should buy this device instead of a laptop, but depending on what you do, this tablet is definitely bridging that gap and almost like blurring the lines between what's possible on a tablet versus a laptop. For instance, this is all for the questions that I was getting about performance. You can even emulate games and play them without any problems. I've tried 3DS, SNES, different consoles, as you can see here. This shouldn't really be a surprise considering we've been able to do this for a few years now, but I do feel like we're able to do this on a Tab S9 Ultra incredibly smoothly now. Even though some of these games don't look like they demand a lot of the processor, emulating gaming consoles in general is quite taxing on the chipset. 
but that four nanometer chipset, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 really shines here. And with more modern games like Genshin Impact and Call of Duty, all set to the highest settings possible, also play really, really well on this tablet. The display is great. Connecting a controller to this is super easy and it makes the whole gaming experience really superb. And if that's not enough to convince you about the performance, we did some 4K video editing too. Let me show you. I did add, you know, quite a few different types of clips. There's 120 FPS in here, 60 FPS, uh, screen recording, because I know those things are quite taxing on even on my M1 Max MacBook Pro. So I wanted to really push these devices. There's only about two layers of video in here and I'm exporting 4K. The iPad does seem to be a little bit faster. Maybe the media engine is a little bit better on this. But the video editing itself, you know, scrubbing through footage, you know, chopping the clips, you know, just manipulating the video as an editor is what I care about the most. The export is probably when I go have a coffee and wait, you know, when I come back is usually done anyway. And they're both gonna be done within one or two minutes of difference, you know, by the looks of it. And here's a couple of quality of life features that I really enjoy on this tablet as well. I kind of take it for granted now, but I should definitely mention it. One is something that not many tablets do, which is haptics. Sounds trivial, but it does make a nice difference to the experience here, depending on what you're doing. The other is the fingerprint reader. This under display reader is extremely accurate and you know I much prefer that to the face recognition and that I'm sorry to say hasn't really improved from the Type SA Ultra. It's not something that I trusted a lot before. If you change your look slightly, cap, no cap, glasses, no glasses, beard, no beard, this whole thing starts to struggle a little bit. I'm always keen to learn about stuff that I don't know yet. So yeah, please do share if you know any, any more little features like that that are kind of hidden gems, let me know. Talking about hidden gems, let's talk about the S Pen. This one is a little bit, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting a bit of mixed feelings about this one. Almost, I don't want to say disappointing. And what I mean by that is the latency issue. I'm going to try and show it here uh, on screen in slow motion. Hopefully that will, that will come up. But it's basically yeah, the, the kind of the time it takes for something to appear in the screen and you touching the screen. It's a tiny little fraction of a second, but it is noticeable if you've used other pencils or you know, like the Apple Pencil or other stylus. There's definitely a difference between them. And I think the Apple Pencil is a little bit faster uh, than the S Pen. On the positive side, I really like how this feels in general on the tablet. I always thought even the previous version of this pen that it had a much softer feel than the Apple Pencil, for example, which I've got it here. The writing experience in general is much better though when you use the note paper cover. Where is that gone? Back in the bone? All that, we hit 100K just today. Yeah, more on that later. So this note paper cover, I didn't know this was an accessory with the Tab S8 Ultra. I wish I did because I would have got it. Samsung didn't seem to talk about it much. And what I really like about this accessory is that after you've done writing or drawing, it's not stuck to the display, right? It's just connected by magnets, so you can just detach it and go about your day. It does give you a little bit of extra privacy, not entirely private, like those privacy covers that we see on laptops, but definitely better than nothing. And talking about doing work on the Tab S9 Ultra, we've got to talk about Samsung DeX. I like to set it up so that attaching the keyboard cover or connecting to an external monitor will trigger DeX automatically, or you can trigger it manually as well by swiping from the top, you know, just kind of selecting Dex or even pressing the Dex button on the keyboard. Now, Samsung did something weird recently with Dex. I have to call them out on this. They're calling it the new Dex or something. I'm not too sure about that one, at least not yet. When I want to use Dex, I want that Dex desktop experience. And can we take a moment here to appreciate how flexible it is to work on the classic Dex? I still think that this is one of the most underrated, least talked about features on any Samsung device. I love DeX and I really do use it for work. It kind of annoys me a little bit and I'm talking about myself here as well because in my previous videos, even about the Tab S8 Ultra, I don't show enough, right? And apart from showing a few clips, we tech reviewers in general don't spend enough time talking about DeX, moving windows with freedom, resizing them, making everything just the way you like for your workflow. It is truly powerful how it lets you use the apps exactly how you are used to on your desktop. When you need to authenticate for purchases or passwords, it's really seamless. And if a call comes in, for example, no problem. Everything just stays connected throughout. And that is only DeX, you know, which is a powerful feature. But let's not forget, we don't need to trigger DeX for multitasking and being productive with this device. Because of this lovely display and One UI itself, of course, you are able to run multiple windows open in a comfortable and practical size. You know, sometimes you can say, yes, we can multitask, 
but when you start opening two, three windows, they go, hang on, I can't actually, you have to kind of be moving the things around. With the Tab S9 Ultra, you can comfortably multitask. You're able to resize them too, and that sometimes is all you need to do. And perhaps that is where Samsung is seeing more potential for that new DeX. I'm not sure what they're trying to do, to be honest. With One UI 6.1, you can now use your Galaxy smartphone as the camera, and that is incredible. I know Apple users will be like, we've been doing this since, I don't know, 2022 or whatever it was. One thing that I shouldn't shy away from mentioning is the quality of Android tablet apps. I just tried to use, uh, you know, this camera sharing thing, which in theory should just work, right? <laughs> Uh, but it doesn't, you know, after 6.1, you have to try a few times. Uh, it doesn't give you any error messages that says connecting. Uh, I found that if you have a mouse and keyboard connected to it, it works. So just, just a tip. But then you've got issues with Google Meet that, you know, the camera doesn't look great. Uh, Zoom, as you can see, I'm using the phone uh, in vertical mode. If you turn it around, the image gets all screwy. So you kind of, you go sideways. It's just not friendly. I mean, it's not a massive issue, but it does annoy me a little bit that things don't work straight away out of the box. You know, you do have to fiddle with it. I had to read some Reddit articles. And as much as I don't like what Apple have been doing with the iPad recently, you know, things, most of the things anyway, just work straight away. You know, the compatibility with other things is limited, but whatever's in there kind of just works. I really wish Samsung would continue to improve the experience here. And I think they are doing it, you know, pushing the boundaries with tablets. I know it's not just up to Samsung. The reality is the app developers may still focus on iPadOS apps first, which is a shame because the potential index right now is so much higher, in my opinion, than what I see today with iPad's stage manager. One UI 6.1 brings in a whole load of features that actually made me go back to the Tab S9 Ultra and use it even more recently. If you're new here, you might not know this, but for the last couple of years, I've transitioned, no way, cut that off. No, oh my God, leave it in. I switched completely from the iPhone and the Apple ecosystem. Of course, I still review the iPhone for this channel, but personally, the S24 Ultra is my main device now, and I do fall back sometimes to the Fold 5, usually in the evenings. Now that the dust has settled, all the phones are being launched, right? Maybe Fold 6 will come out and that will change a little bit. But the reason I'm saying all of this is because some of the Galaxy AI features that are now second nature on the S24 Ultra make even more sense now on this tablet. Taking notes, summarizing voice recordings, summarizing websites. I don't really use circle to search as much. In fact, I only used it in these videos to show off <laughs> in me using it, but on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not used. But writing assist, for example, is a huge time saver for me. I use that all the time, responding to your lovely comments on YouTube. In fact, let's have a little game here. Add 100K to your comment to let me know that you've watched this far. But there's a lot of these AI features that I haven't even tried, so it's worth checking them out. Which brings me to something that helps me a lot, not just with the tablet, but with all my Samsung devices, which is good luck. And I'm not gonna cover a lot about this here, but do make sure to download it. It really opens a whole new set of functionalities that make this tablet or any Samsung device really even more powerful. So many cool features, including running Dex in 4K, which by the way, took me a while to figure out on the Tab S8 Ultra, but I learned my lesson now. If you've got the right monitor, that's really gonna help you. Okay, but what about the cameras on this tablet? I'm just joking. I'm not gonna waste your time on this. They are decent. It's a tablet, but on the other hand, I don't wanna sound too dismissive. Samsung did a bit of work here, especially on the front facing cameras. It allows you to move around the space a little bit and be followed by the camera because it's got that wide angle, which whilst I don't use it personally, I do appreciate that you might use that feature. And from what I can see, it's really good, even in low light conditions. Now talking about the config that I went for, I went pretty much for the base model here. Samsung still allow you to extend the storage with an SD card which is fantastic. It's one of those things that this alone actually might be the reason to choose this tablet over anything else. Something else that you get here that you don't get with other tablets is IP68, which is water and dust resistance. I do believe that this is the only tablet on the market that has this. I could be wrong though, let me know. And when it comes to the battery, not much to say about it because even on busy days when I was like using the tablet for my travels, all day long. I didn't have to worry about charging until you know much later in the day when I charge overnight anyway. It's not the fastest to charge, so if you wanna do something during the day and recharge it during the day, just bear in mind that it's, I think, only 45 watt charging. 
but it really doesn't bother me. The Tab S9 Ultra can 100% be used by itself. In fact, that's how I used my Tab S8 Ultra, you know, without any accessories apart from, from a stand. But it really comes to life when you do use it with decent accessories. The best ones for me right now are one, this leather sleeve that I've got here from Harbour London. Not sponsored by them either. They have sponsored the channel before and they have sent me the stuff for free and they are really durable, classy looking accessories. Dangerous website to visit. It's awesome. The second one is the magnetic stand from Lulu Look. That name <laughs> always gets me. I find it hard to recommend it though because it does mess around with the S Pen. The magnets are really, really strong. When you're trying to do very precise movements, it will mess with the S Pen a little bit. It's fine for most use cases, including mine, but if all you're trying to do is to have the tablet elevated and for it to be nice and sturdy while you're using it, this is fantastic. It really is the best I found and trust me, I, I bought a few of these and tried them all. There are others on Amazon that are getting better. There's actually a newer version of this as well, which looks great. And to be honest, if what you're trying to write or draw doesn't need to be 100% accurate, then this is actually still perfect. I'd love to have one of these arms, like the one I've got here for the iPad, but I haven't found a decent one yet. And answering the questions about how it compares with the iPad, I just love how Samsung is like, here, you want to plug your device into a monitor and be productive with no issues, have at it. With a cable, wirelessly, we don't care. Literally every possible way to be productive, they give it to us, the customers. We can't really say the same about Apple. The iPad, for instance, is amazing, but it will only work with an external monitor if you use the Pro devices or the latest iPad Air, I believe. With Samsung, external monitor support has been, you know, it's been around for a while. I think even going back to the Galaxy Note, maybe, maybe earlier than that, I don't know. But the iPad does have an advantage if all that you want is a tablet with very polished apps. Stage Manager is getting better, in my opinion. Not forgetting the fact that graphic design apps, for example, are just better on iPad OS. It's not impossible to be an artist and use the Tab S9 Ultra. In fact, you're gonna find lots of great examples of that here on YouTube. But I still don't think we have as many high-end apps for graphic designers like we do have on iPad OS. And when it comes to performance, as you've seen here today, the Tab S9 Ultra does allow you to do more with it in comparison with the iPad. When I have to pick one to be productive, this is the one I go for. I don't pick the iPad to do work, not at all. And sometimes I see videos on there and people like doing, I, I just use the iPad for everything. It's like, I don't know. I, I'm very skeptical when I see those. Please do keep your comments coming as well. Thank you so much for helping me achieve 100K today. That really means the world to me. And I'll see you soon. If you buy the Pro devices, fine, <laughs> whatever.